Till now we have performed four different operations on continuous time signals. The first operation was shifting operation in which we saw time shifting and amplitude shifting. The second operation was scaling operation in which again we discussed time scaling and amplitude scaling and the third operation was reversal operation which is an special case of scaling operation. The fourth operation was differentiation operation which we discussed in the last two lectures. Now the fifth operation, the fifth operation is integration operation. So in this lecture we will understand how we can integrate continuous time signals. There are three different methods to do this. The first method, the method number one is graphical method. Like graphical differentiation we also have graphical integration and if you remember regarding the graphical differentiation we were limited to the signals which are related to only step and ramp. But in case of graphical integration we are only limited to the signals which are step. So you can use graphical integration on the signals which are only step signals like the example you can see on your screen. The method number two is the mathematical integration. In this we will first try to obtain the mathematical representation of the given signal waveform and then we will perform the integration on the obtained mathematical representation and finally we will plot the result. The next method is method number three in which we will use the barriers of the step signal. Here we have two barriers and we will use these two barriers to integrate the signal waveform. Now whenever you have question on integration of continuous time signals, generally the waveform of the signal is given and the result is expected as the waveform of the integration of the signal. So you need the waveform of the integrated signal. So using method number one which is graphical method is much easier as compared to method number two because here we can directly obtain the waveform of the integrated signal but in this case we need three steps to obtain the waveform of the integrated signal. And method number three is important to understand the convolution. Now let's discuss method number one first. The signal given is xt, signal given is xt and we want to integrate, we want to integrate signal xt and let's say after integration we have signal yt. Now signal yt is equal to integration of signal xt with respect to time. Now how we perform the integration? We start from the extreme point and the extreme point is the minus infinity and from minus infinity we simply increment to a very small value let's say dt. So we are at minus infinity and we increment a very small time that is dt and then we will calculate the increment in the area because integration is nothing but the area under the curve. So this is what we do and we go on increasing this small time and we will reach to our final destination that is infinity. So from minus infinity to infinity we will integrate the signal or you can say from minus infinity to infinity we will try to find out the area under the curve. Now here we are representing the integration as xt dt. This means we are simply finding out the area of the rectangle because signal xt is a step signal and dt which is the time axis if you multiply the value of step with dt you will have the area of a particular rectangle. Now what will be the limits or the range of integration? It will be from minus infinity to any particular time t because we are incrementing the time by very small values. So we will start from minus infinity and we will go on increasing this time slowly. Now there is one confusion. The input signal is represented by x t and the x axis which is the time axis is also represented by t and the upper limit of the integration is represented by t. So there is confusion regarding all this. So what we can do to eliminate the confusion we will simply change the independent variable instead of having t instead of having t we will have tau and as t is replaced by tau everywhere the signal is not going to change the signal waveform will remain same as we have seen in the multiple transformations if we change the x-axis which is the independent variables axis and also we will change the independent variable same as the independent variable here the signal waveform will not change 
But now we have better difference between the upper limit of the integration which is t and the independent variable of the input signal. Now let's see how we can perform the graphical integration. As I told you, we will start from minus infinity. We will start from minus infinity and we will simply increment the time t slowly. And let's say, let's say when t is equal to zero. This means we are integrating from minus infinity to zero because when you integrate from minus infinity to any negative number, you can see the integration is going to be zero. Why? Because the area is equal to zero. The signal value is zero from minus infinity to zero. So even if you increment time slowly till zero, you are going to get zero. So integration from minus infinity to zero will give us area equal to zero or simply signal yt is equal to zero. Now we will increment the time we will increment this time little bit more and let's say now we are integrating from minus infinity to 1 and if you see from minus infinity to 1 you will find the area is going to be 2 why because signal value is equal to 2 from 0 to 1 so you can easily calculate this area 2 multiplied by 1 so area this time is equal to 2 which is signal yt now similarly I will increase the time more and this time we have 2 as the upper limit of integration and again we will have some increment in the area. Now try to understand this point when you integrate from minus infinity to 1 we are having area 2. Now when you integrate from minus infinity to 2 we will have this limit also included from minus infinity to 1. So this time we will take this area as well as this area. So total area is going to be 4 or you can simply obtain the area of this rectangle from 0 to 2 which is the base of the rectangle and 2 is the height. So 0 to 2 is 2 and 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. So finally we have signal yt equal to 4 for this range of integration. Now let's increase t more and this time we will stop at 3. So from minus infinity to 3 we have area equal to 6. So area is equal to 6. This extra area 2 is added to the previous area. So we have 6 and this is equal to y. Now the important point is what will happen when we integrate from minus infinity to 4. From minus infinity to 4. From 3 to 4 the area is going to be 0. So what will be the area? Area will be 6. Area will be 6. So if we go on increasing the time t now, the area will remain 6 always. So even if you integrate from minus infinity to 5, the area is going to be 6. From minus infinity to 6, area is going to be 6. And from minus infinity to infinity, the area is going to be 6, which is the final value of signal yt. So we can say that integration finally continues with the final area. So whatever you have as your final area, the integration will continue with that area till infinity. This point will be clear when we will plot the waveform of signal of signal yt. And signal yt is integration from minus infinity to t x tau d tau. So from minus infinity to 0, yt is equal to 0. From minus infinity to 1, yt is equal to 2. So we will have 2 as the value of signal yt. From minus infinity to 2, yt is equal to 4. So we will have 4 here. And from minus infinity to 3, signal yt is equal to 6. So we will have 6 when t is equal to 3. And after this, the value of signal yt, which is integration of xt, will not change. Even if you go on increasing the time more and more, the value will remain same which is equal to 6. So from 3 to infinity signal yt will continue with the value equal to 6. Okay. Now I will join these points and in this way we have the waveform of signal yt. So this is how we can obtain the integrated waveform of the given signal. So this is the original signal and this is the integration of this original signal. I hope this process is clear to you. We are simply incrementing the time t by smaller values. We started from minus infinity 
then we choose our t to be less than 0 in that case we had the integration equal to 0 then we choose our t to be equal to 0 again we had the integration equal to 0 after this we choose our t to be 1 and this time we got value of integration as 2 after this we selected our t as 2 and we got the area equal to 4 you can also have the inter mediate value for example t equal to 1.5 and when t is equal to 1.5 you can calculate this area here this area here 2 multiplied by 1.5 2 multiplied by 1.5 is equal to 3 so the area is equal to 3 and signal y t is also equal to 3 and this is happening when t is equal to 1.5 so when t is 1.5 the corresponding value which is this one is equal to 3 but it was not required as we don't want to increase our calculations the increment in time t the increment in time t can be very small and for all those increments we cannot calculate the area so we look to the graph and we choose some reasonable increments so this is all for method number one and remember one thing it is only for only for step signals now we will discuss method number two in method number two we will first obtain the mathematical representation of input signal which is xt by using this waveform we will start from left we already know how we can obtain the mathematical representation signal value will be zero initially then you can see when t is equal to zero when t is equal to zero there is upward level switching and we already know when there is upward level switching we take the positive sign and the amount of discontinuity is equal to 2 we are switching from 0 to 2 so we will have positive 2 and the step will be u t minus 0 okay and after this the flow of the signal will become like this and now when t is equal to 3 there is downward level switching after which the flow of the signal is like this and it continues for downward level switching we will take negative sign the amount of discontinuity is equal to 2 so again we will have 2 here and this step will be u t minus 3 let's simplify this we will have 2 u t minus 2 u t minus 3 so this is the mathematical representation of the input signal waveform and now we will integrate it we will integrate it so we have integration of ut minus integration of u t minus 3 integration of ut is the ram signal which is rt so we will have twice of rt minus integration of ut minus 3 will be rt minus 3 so we will have twice of rt minus 3 so this is signal yt now plot this and you will have the same waveform so you can see method number two the mathematical representation is not very convenient as compared to method number one so if you have option follow the method number one and now we will discuss method number three in case of method number three we will first check how many barriers we are having in this step in this particular step we are having two barriers this one and this one so t equal to zero is the first barrier and t equal to 3 is the second barrier and now we will follow the same process like we did in method number 1 we will start from minus infinity and we will increment our time slowly and let's say the first stop is when t is less than 0 when t is less than the first barrier which is 0 and then we will have our t between the first barrier and the second barrier after this we will have our t greater than the second barrier which is 3 so this is all you need to do in method number 3 and based on this we will perform the integration so let's see how we can perform the integration signal y t is equal to integration minus infinity to t signal x tau d tau and based on the above 
process we will have integration minus infinity to t x tau d tau when t is less than 0 here t is less than 0 which is the first barrier after this we will again perform the integration from minus infinity to t signal x tau d tau when t is between the first barrier and the second barrier the first barrier is equal to 0 and the second barrier is equal to 3 and t is in between these two barriers again we will perform the integration from minus infinity to t x tau d tau and this time t is greater than 3 which is the second barrier so this is how we will perform the integration so let's start our integration in the next step you can clearly see in the waveform when t is less than 0 the signal value is equal to 0 so the integration is going to be 0 but first I will write down the integration minus infinity to t 0 d tau when t is less than 0 and this integration will be equal to 0 after this when t is between 0 and 3 between the first barrier and the second barrier the signal value is equal to 2 the signal value is equal to 2 so let's see what we have you cannot directly write down the integration minus infinity to t 2 d tau why because t is between 0 and 3 and before that we have one barrier which is 0 so from minus infinity to 0 we will first write down the signal value and then we will write down the value of signal when integrated from 0 to t so let's see how we can write it from minus infinity to 0 the first barrier the signal is 0 so we will have 0 d tau plus from 0 from 0 to t from 0 to this t here somewhere between first and second barrier we will have the signal value equal to 2 so we will have 2 d tau this is when t is less than 3 but greater than 0 now the only integration left is when t is greater than 3 and this time again we will follow the same process we will first write down the integration from minus infinity to 0 which is 0 d tau plus we will write down the integration from 0 to 3 the first barrier and the second barrier and the value of signal is 2 d tau plus the integration from 3 to t and the signal value will be 0 and this time t is greater than 3 so this is what we have in the second step and now we can easily solve these integrations the first integration here will give us result equal to 0 this will also give us 0 this will give us 0 and this will also give us 0 ok and this integration is equal to 6 and this integration is equal to 2t so we have the final result the final result signal y t when t is less than 0 you can see signal value is equal to 0 when t is between 0 and 3 signal value is equal to 2t because 0 plus 2t is equal to 2t when t is less than 3 but greater than 0 and the third case when t is greater than 3 we have 0 plus 6 plus 0 so 6 is what we have when t is greater than 3 so this is the final result and we can easily plot the waveform of signal y t when t is less than 0 the signal value is equal to 0 when t is between 0 and 3 signal is a straight line with slope equal to 2 which is a positive slope so we will have a straight line like this we will have a straight line like this when t is equal to 3 the signal value will be 6 in this way we will have 6 divided by 3 having the slope equal to 2 and the angle made by this line with the x-axis is less than 90 degree so the slope is also positive after this when t is greater than 3 the signal value always remains equal to 6 so this is how the waveform will look and if you compare this waveform with the waveform we obtained in the first case you will find they are same in the third method you can see y t which is integration of signal x t is continuing with the final value the final value is equal to 6 and it is continuing with it till t equal to infinity 
so we can use the first and the third methods easily the third method is important to understand the convolution and if you simply need to find out the graph of the integrated signal use the method number one and if you are required to find out the mathematical representation of integrated signal use method number two so this is all for this lecture i hope you now understand how to integrate the continuous time signals in the coming presentations we will solve few questions based on the integration